When Soviet drilling teams pierced deeper into the earth than anyone had ever gone, they uncovered something in the Kola borehole that contradicted everything scientists believed about our planet. What they found down there would force them to question whether they should share the truth about what they saw. Viktor Petrov stared at the core sample on his lab table, his hands trembling slightly as he rotated the cylinder of rock under the microscope. It was May 1989, and the sample had just come up from 12,200 meters below the surface at the Kola Superdeep Borehole drilling site in northern Russia. Something was embedded in the granite that shouldn't exist at that depth. Dmitri, come look at this. Viktor called to his colleague across the laboratory. Dmitri Volkov set down his clipboard and walked over, adjusting his glasses. What is it? I don't know yet, but it's organic. The two geologists had been working the COLA project for over a decade, analyzing thousands of core samples as the drill pushed deeper into the Earth's crust. They'd seen plenty of strange things, but this was different. Here's where this all began. 19 years earlier, on May 24, 1970, engineers fired up the Ural Mash 4E drilling rig near the Norwegian border. The Soviet Union was locked in competition with America, not just in space, but in a race to reach the center of the Earth. The Americans had tried and failed with Project Mohole in the 1960s, and now it was the Soviets' turn. The project leader, a gruff engineer named Alexei Sokolov, gathered his team that first morning. We're going to drill deeper than anyone has gone before, he announced. 15,000 meters if we can manage it. The Americans couldn't do it. We will. The first few years went smoothly. The drill chewed through granite at a steady pace, and core samples came up exactly as predicted. Scientists logged temperatures, measured densities, and compared everything to their theoretical models. Everything matched. The team celebrated when they passed 3,000 meters, then 5,000. However, around the 7,000-meter mark, geophysicist Elena Kuznetsova noticed something odd in the samples. She knocked on Alexei's office door one evening in 1974. We have a problem, she said, sliding a report across his desk. Alexei scanned the document, his brow furrowing. This says there's no basalt layer. Exactly. According to every seismic survey we've done, there should be a transition from granite to basalt, right around 7,000 meters. We call it the Conrad discontinuity. But the drill just passed through that depth, and there's nothing but more granite. The seismic data must be wrong then. Elena shook her head. Or our understanding of our Earth's composition is wrong. Either way, this is going to raise questions. Alexei closed the report and locked it in his desk drawer. Let's not circulate this widely yet. If word gets out that our seismic interpretations have been wrong, it undermines decades of Soviet geological surveys. We need to be absolutely certain before we make any announcements. But Alexei, I'm not saying we ignore it, Elena. I'm saying we need to be careful. Those questions multiplied as the drilling continued. In 1979, the Kola borehole became the deepest hole on Earth, surpassing the American record. Government officials flew in for celebrations. Champagne bottles popped. But behind the festivities, the scientific team was growing increasingly puzzled. Victor remembered the day in 1982 when they pulled up a core sample from around 4,000 meters that was damp to the touch. He'd been a junior researcher then, eager and curious. There's water in the rock his supervisor had said, examining the sample. Is that unusual? At this depth? It shouldn't exist. The pressure should be too great, the temperature too high. But here it is. The mystery deepened with each passing year. In 1983, the drill crossed 12,000 meters, and the project paused for a year while scientists and officials toured the facility. However, when drilling resumed in 1984, disaster struck. At 12,066 meters, 5,000 meters of drill string twisted off and fell into the hole. The team had to start a new branch from 7,000 meters. Three years of work, gone, Alexei muttered, staring at the readouts. But he wasn't a man who gave up easily. We start again. The third drilling attempt began in 1986, and by 1989, they'd reached 12,262 meters 
the deepest point humans would ever achieve at Kola. That's when Victor made his discovery. Under the microscope, the organic material in the core sample became clear. Microscopic fossils, perfectly preserved despite the crushing pressure and heat. Victor spent three days analyzing them before he was certain. They're plankton, he told the assembled research team at their weekly meeting. Single-celled marine organisms, and based on the surrounding rock formation, they're approximately two billion years old. The room erupted in conversation. Elena stood up. That's impossible. At that depth, the temperature is over 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Organic compounds can't survive those conditions. And yet here they are, Victor replied. I've confirmed it with multiple samples. These fossils exist at depths we thought would destroy any organic material. Alexei raised his hand for silence. Victor, I need you to keep this finding internal for now. Don't discuss it outside this room. Why not? Victor asked, confused. Because, Alexei said carefully, this contradicts 20 years of published Soviet research on thermal limits for organic preservation. If we announce this now, it raises questions about everything we've said before. Let me consult with Moscow first. Victor exchanged a glance with Elena. He'd seen this before, inconvenient data being quietly shelved. Director Sokolov leaned back in his chair. What does this mean for our understanding of the crust? It means, Elena said slowly, that we don't understand it as well as we thought. If organic material can be preserved at these depths, it changes everything about how we think about the origins of life and the conditions under which it can survive. But the fossils weren't the only unexpected discovery in the Kola borehole. Dmitri had been studying the drilling mud that flowed back from the depths, and his findings were equally disturbing to established scientific theory. The mud is saturated with hydrogen gas, Dmitri said, far more than we predicted. It's actually bubbling when it reaches the surface, like it's boiling, though temperature isn't the cause. Where's the hydrogen coming from? Victor asked. Dimitri shrugged. Either it's being produced by an unknown process down there, or it's been trapped in the rock for millions of years, and we're releasing it by drilling. Either way, it's not supposed to be there in these concentrations. The drilling mud bubbling with hydrogen remained one of the project's most puzzling observations, no one could definitively explain where such high concentrations of the gas originated or why it appeared at these specific depths. The water discovery troubled them even more. Core samples from between 3,000 and 6,000 meters consistently showed liquid water in microscopic cracks and fissures. Elena ran calculations at her desk one night, checking and rechecking her math. The numbers didn't lie. This water has percolated down from the surface over millions of years she explained to Victor. It found pathways through rock we assumed was impermeable. It traveled down until it reached a depth where the pressure was so great that it couldn't go any further. And there it sits, trapped. But everyone believes water can't exist at these depths. Everyone is wrong, Elena said flatly. And that's exactly why they won't let us present this at the next geological conference. The evidence is right here. We can either accept it or keep pretending that our models are perfect. The temperature readings were perhaps the most troubling finding. Scientists had predicted the rock would heat up gradually, reaching about 210 degrees Fahrenheit at 12,000 meters. But instead, instruments recorded temperatures exceeding 350 degrees. The temperature gradient conformed to predictions down to about 3,000 meters, but beyond that point, the heat intensified until it reached 350 degrees Fahrenheit at around 12,000 meters, a drastic difference from the 200 degrees they expected. This extreme heat made the rock behave more like plastic than solid material, with increased porosity and permeability past the first 4,500 meters. The rock that should have fractured cleanly under the drill instead deformed and flowed, rendering drilling virtually impossible. Alexei called an emergency meeting in June 1990. The heat is making the rock behave like plastic, he explained. It's not fracturing cleanly anymore. We've tried everything, different bits, different speeds, and different drilling mud compositions. Nothing works. Can we push deeper? One of the engineers asked. We've tried. We lost equipment at 12,262 meters three days ago. The rock is too weak, too hot. 
We can't drill through material that flows like warm clay. Young engineer Sergei Ivanov raised his hand. What about starting a new branch from a shallower depth? Alexei nodded. We'll try, but I'm not optimistic. The temperature issue exists at all these depths. The deeper we go, the worse it gets. They started a fourth branch in January 1991, and then a fifth in 1994, but the same problems emerged. The rock refused to cooperate. Equipment failed. The temperature made drilling impossible. And by 1994, there was a bigger problem. Money. The funding has been cut, Alexei announced at a staff meeting in August 1994. The Soviet Union is gone. The new government doesn't see the value in continuing. We're mothballing the entire operation. Victor felt a pang of loss. Nearly 25 years of work, and they'd never reached their goal of 15,000 meters. But as he packed up his research materials, he realized they'd achieved something more important. We proved that all our models were wrong, he said to Dimitri as they boxed up core samples. Is that a good thing? It's the best thing. Science isn't about being right. It's about discovering when you're wrong so you can learn something new. Years later, in 2007, Victor found himself in a Moscow conference room with Elena and a handful of other former COLA researchers. The project had been officially shut down, the site abandoned. They'd gathered to discuss what to do with the decades of data. We need to publish everything, Elena insisted. Every unexpected finding, every contradiction of established theory, the missing basalt layer, the water, the fossils, the temperatures, all of it. An older colleague shook his head. Some of our superiors were reluctant to publicize findings that contradicted accepted models. It made Soviet science look uncertain. Science is supposed to be uncertain, Victor countered. That's how it works. We observe, we test, we revise our understanding. Hiding data because it's inconvenient doesn't help anyone. Elena pulled out a folder thick with reports. The unexpected discovery in the Kola borehole isn't just one thing. It's dozens of findings that Soviet scientists tried to hide or downplay because the evidence didn't fit the narrative. For years, we were told to keep our most significant discoveries quiet, all because the data challenged Soviet geological doctrine. She paused, her voice dropping. Some of us were even threatened with reassignment if we pushed too hard to publish. Victor nodded grimly. I remember when Dimitri tried to submit his hydrogen findings to an international journal. His security clearance was suspended for six months. The message was clear. These discoveries stay within Soviet borders. They spent the next several hours organizing their data, preparing it for publication in international journals. The Conrad discontinuity that was supposed to mark a transition from granite to basalt simply didn't exist at Kola meaning the seismic data scientists had relied on for decades was being misinterpreted. The water at impossible depths proved that Earth's crust was more porous and interconnected than anyone previously believed. The fossils showed that organic material could survive extreme conditions, opening new possibilities for understanding life's origins and its potential to exist in harsh environments. What about the temperature findings? Victor asked. Elena nodded. Those might be the most important, we need to completely revise our thermal models of Earth's interior. It has implications for everything from plate tectonics to geothermal energy. Over the following months, they published their findings. The international scientific community initially met the reports with skepticism, but as other deep drilling projects in Germany, Austria, and Sweden encountered similar surprises, the evidence became undeniable. Dr. Ulrich Harms from Germany's Scientific Earth Probing Consortium visited the abandoned Kola site in 2010. Victor accompanied him on the tour. It's remarkable what you accomplished here, Harms said, standing before the sealed wellhead. You drilled deeper than anyone, and you discovered that we don't understand Earth nearly as well as we thought. Victor smiled. That was the most valuable lesson. Every time reality contradicts your model, you have an opportunity to learn something true about the world. They walked among the rusting equipment, past the rotting wood and sheets of scrap metal that were all that remained of the once bustling drilling operation. A heavy maintenance cover secured with a dozen large bolts marked the top of the borehole, just nine inches in diameter, 
but descending 12,262 meters into Earth's crust. Do you think anyone will drill deeper? Victor asked. Harms considered the question. Eventually, yes, technology improves. The Chinese are already attempting a 10,000 meter hole, but the real prize is reaching the mantle at 40,000 meters. That will require solving the same problems you faced. Heat, pressure, and rock that behaves like plastic. It might take decades. And when they do, they'll find more surprises. Without question, what they found at Kola taught us that direct observation of Earth's interior always yields discoveries that no amount of remote sensing can predict. Every core sample tells a story. Every unexpected finding opens new questions. Victor looked down at the sealed hole, thinking about all the cores he'd examined, all the late nights in the lab, and all the moments of confusion when the data didn't match expectations. Those had been the best moments, the ones where certainty crumbled and genuine discovery became possible. We didn't reach 15 meters, Victor said, but we learned that the planet beneath our feet is far stranger than we imagined, the water that shouldn't exist, the fossils that shouldn't survive, the missing rock layers, the searing heat. Each finding on its own would have been significant. Together they rewrote the textbooks. Harms placed a hand on the sealed cover. This unexpected discovery in the Kola borehole that Soviet scientists tried to hide, it wasn't really hidden, was it? It was just uncomfortable. Data that didn't fit the accepted models. But eventually, the truth emerges. Always, Victor agreed. Today, the Kola Superdeep Borehole stands as a monument to both human ambition and human humility. We reached deeper than ever before, and in doing so, we discovered how much we still don't know. The hole remains sealed, but the questions it raised echo through geology labs worldwide. Scientists continue to study the core samples, extracting new insights decades after they were pulled from the depths. And somewhere, Engineers are developing new technologies that might one day let us drill even deeper, pierce through the Earth's crust, and retrieve samples from Earth's mantle. When they do, they'll certainly find more surprises. That's the real legacy of Kola. Not the depth record, but the reminder that Earth still has secrets to reveal. This unexpected discovery in the Kola borehole wasn't just about what Soviet scientists tried to hide. It was about learning that reality is always stranger than our models predict and that the greatest scientific achievements come not from confirming what we believe, but from discovering we were wrong. What mysteries do you think still lie hidden in Earth's crust? Could we reach the mantle within our lifetime? Share your theories in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. We will see you in our next video.